Aloha! This is Dr. Tiki, writing a prescription for tiki drinks, tattoos, and tech. What could be more fun? It's time for another Strange Love Live. This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Behind the desk this week, producing the show, we've got the lovely, the talented Morgan PDX. Hello. And Dr. Normal has a very, very tiny desk off in the corner. We're kind of pushing him out of the room a little bit um, as he runs a, an interesting streaming experiment that he might tell you about after the show's over. But this week on the show, we have, again, Don Park. Hello. Hi, Don. How are you? Hey, Cammie. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I feel like we've been down this road before. We have, except without the recording. <laughs> <laughs> How long has it been since you've been on the show? Uh, I think it's been almost a year. Mm-hmm. It was um, this time last year when I was like heavy into Android, and I yeah. still am. Yeah. What well, was when the Android phone was first coming out, wasn't it? Uh, that's right. Especially the Android market had yeah. just come out. Yeah. 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 And now you're doing some other stuff. Uh, yeah, actually, still a lot of Android. You're but still doing a lot of Android. Also, one website in particular. Okay, we're gonna talk first about Jite, right? And about about us's acquisition of Jite. So I I would do the recap and tell you what Jite is. I've already <laughs> done that today, and I did it on the Impedex. So I'm, so I'm gonna let you tell us what Jite is and about why it was such a good match for about us. So. Jite is a fairly straightforward concept, um, but there's it has a lot of nuance to it. It was made about three years ago by uh, two engineers at Janrain, mm -hmm. uh, Brian Ellen and a guy who goes by Dag. Mm -hmm. And it was created as a, a social experiment. OpenID, uh, Janrain is really focused on OpenID, and they wanted to build products based on that. Mm -hmm. And what Jite is, is, is like Dig. It's very similar to Dig. You vote uh, you vote things up and down. But and, it's not articles. So you can just make a statement. Right. Instead of voting for a particular URL, you just make a general plain text statement. Like, like Cammy is the best co-host ever. That would be a great that statement That may have been Jite. something. It that may, may already have, be on the may site, already actually, have been, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone might have put that up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so over time, you know, that a statement like that would collect votes up mm -hmm. and down and collect comments. And, mm -hmm. and so that's uh, one part of this experiment called Jite. And then the other part is cred. And so the catchphrase for Jite is spread the cred. Mm -hmm. And what that means is if you're a user on Jite and you notice another Jite user, you can give them cred. And what cred is basically a keyword, and you assign it to someone as a way to say that I have trust in this person in this area, or this is something that they're good at. Mm -hmm. So like, so can you uh, assign cred in a specific area or just in general? So you make up the word. So again, cred is just like a keyword. Okay. Um, and you can have it be whatever you want, and then you give that to someone. Now, if someone's given you that same word, you have more value in that area. And so when you give someone cred, you, the cred that you give is worth more if other people have given you the same cred. Okay, so... If someone gave me cred for, if someone gave me like a podcasting cred, exactly, and then I went and said podcasting to somebody else, it would be worth more because I had podcasting. That's right. Okay, that so, makes sense. I get it. Yeah. So the experiment okay. is to build up reputation on the internet. Yeah. And base it on an open ID. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So that, like I said, like three years ago, it was made, mm -hmm. uh, and then it it had its heyday and kind of languished for a while, and uh, Jan Rain just kind of put it on the shelf. Uh, and then About Us uh, wanted a new platform to experiment w with ideas because yeah. Jite already has a pretty strong community. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's about 1,800 visitors a day. There's about 300 comments made uh, per day and mm -hmm. about 60 or 70 claims made per day. Uh, and, and that's just sitting on the shelf with no one promoting it, no one doing anything special with yeah, it? Yeah, right. Okay. And so now the, the Jite community knows it. About us bought it, and someone's taking care of it and mm -hmm. uh, actively maintaining it and actually um, improving it too. So, what what kind of improvements? 
Uh, so actually, those are all still on the drawing board. Like right now, the uh, uh, the version <laughs> of Rails, this Ruby on Rails app, uh -huh. is very dated. Uh -huh. So I'm just working on bringing everything up to date. And it's great because, you know, like there's some broken pieces, right? And all I have to do is like dust off the table and throw the switch. And now it's a massive part of the site is working again, you know? And then they say like, good job, Don, you did this. And really all I did was just <laughs> dust it off, throw the switch. Yeah. Because, you know, it's been neglected and now it's not. So. And how did you get involved? Uh, so, uh, well, about us came to me and asked and said that they're buying the site Giants. Well, mm -hmm. they've already bought it when they yeah. came to me. And so they want someone to take care of it because mm -hmm. they have their existing engineers working on their own new stuff. Mm -hmm. Some exciting new stuff they got. And I said, great. I know about Gi I know about Jite and uh, Ruby on Rails. And it was a good fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you hope to do with it? Where do you hope to take it? Uh, well, and is and the other part of that is is it going to be um, integrated more into the About Us site? Yeah. So as far as site integration, aboutus.org, um, that is up to Ray King, and I think he's got some ideas there, but mm -hmm. um, none of that's been rolled out yet. Okay. So, uh, but uh, there's you know it's what what it is is a neat platform to think if cred works this way, you know, and we tweak it this much, how does it affect the community? Yeah, um, and the, calc the calculation of cred is actually kind of a mystery black box thing. So uh, we need to document like how it works and publish that. How is it a mystery? You don't know. Well, so if somebody gives me cred, I'll, the cred value will be like five point two. Okay. But I but don't what's know that 5 .2 exactly. Based on? Yeah, how okay. that five point two came to be. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make an infographic. I've been into infographics lately, and I want to make one that kind of describes, you know. How that works. How the cred gets spread out. That's right. So what's the most commonly used cred word? Hmm. Probably beer. Beer? Yeah. Well, gets we'll get into beer a, a little bit later. We have a okay. beer we have a beer thing to talk about too. Mm, okay. But don't we? We do. Oh we do. We yeah, do. You're right. <laughs> I know your notes better than you do. <laughs> yeah. You're right, we'll get there. I prepped for the show, people. Good job. I prepped for the show. I spent hours, hours or minutes. Reading about things that I had already read about <laughs> previously, to be fair. Um, um, but one thing I didn't know about was, do you want to move on to SwipSwap? Sure. Okay, so SwipSwap. Swip. Can you say Jemina? Say <laughs> Jemina and Jemina. Uh, Geomina. Geomina. Yeah. Sorry. It's like Menomina. Yeah. I know, that's how we had to do it. Okay. <laughs> but I can't do it without singing, and I was trying not to sing. Oh, well, yeah. singing helps. Yeah, it does. Maybe singing next that's, time. Yes, when we did the Mean PDX episode about it, yeah, that's the only way we could say it. We sang it the whole time, and by we I mean me. Right. Um, okay, Swip Swap, which is SwipSwapContacts.com, and I downloaded Swip Swap today. And oh, you did. Put it on my iPhone. Great. Yeah. But I wasn't around anyone else with Swip Swap, so I don't really know. It's it's a lot like Bump, but different, right? Right. Um, so there's only a... it works over more than one. I think Bump. Yeah, bump, bump, bump is you have to be on the person. network, person um, to person. Well, you have to have, yeah, you have yeah. to have a cellular network. Um, um, so how does swip swap work? Because it's, it's, it's a transferring of your information. Right. And, uh, well, let me first say that Mindworm makes it, and this mm -hmm. John Roberts, um, Ken, and Brian, and mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. are the four founders. Mm -hmm. And it's an iPhone app mm -hmm. um, right now, soon to be an Android app. I don't know if you can. Oh, look, it's and swip it's, swap contacts. I need to register Yeah, it's Mindworm. group contact swap. I haven't registered yet because <laughs> I just downloaded it. Oh, and it wants, you know, it probably wants me to go on the internet, which I can't do because. So Bump's a pretty good I comparison. Has I have a used Bump yes. to exchange contacts? I have used Bump. And it's it's fun. It's got that Bump kind of gimmick, mm -hmm. and you can do one-to-one -one content swaps pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, but if, so the use case for Swip Swap is if you're in a meeting and you've got 10 people around the table and mm -hmm. you want to get all their cards, right, mm -hmm. all their business cards, if you were to bump, that you'd would have take to bump all day. You'd have to, yeah. <laughs> and and I didn't get, get carried away. So yeah. I, yeah, the first few bumps would be good. You'd and be then doing after like that, around I'd be the like, back bumps and under yeah, the leg bumps. And then bumps I'd be and... like, okay, look, people, could you just hand it to me on a piece of paper? So swip swap, you so, can just get everyone's information at once. Yeah, it's uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth based, mm -hmm. and it uses something called ZeroConf. Um, it's also called Bonjour. Mm -hmm. the OS, the Apple pioneered mm -hmm. and it just discovers everyone in the room and then everybody says yes i want to participate in this group contact swap and then it just happens mm -hmm. 
So that's that's the use case. That's the product. There's a so there's an existing iPhone product, and I was brought on to uh, head up the Android port of that. So right now it's just for iPhone. Right. Okay. And the how Android ones in the works. How far out are you, Don? <laughs> We're about thirty <laughs> percent there. So, and when did you start? Uh, started well, really in earnest in January. So you're making good progress. Mm -hmm. I hate it when they snicker behind the desk. Because I don't know if they're snickering at something that they're doing or if they're like, <laughs> oh my God, she's so lame. They're probably still laughing about Bump. Probably. Bump, yeah. But no, I like, I, that's a good, I mean, uh, there have been times that uh, you'll be, like, Wiffies is a good example. I'll be at Wiffies mm -hmm. and we'll be like swapping information with people in the bump and someone will see you bump and, they'll, and everyone's like, wait, are we bumping? Let's... <laughs> and I, I do, I really yeah. like the, the, the group contact switching. So again, how did you get involved in that? It's just because you're an Android guy? And yeah, people know, and they go, oh, we need pe Android, we need Don, where's Don? Yeah, and I knew uh, John Roberts before through Twitter. Mm -hmm. He's the CEO of Mindworm. Mm -hmm. so. so let's take a moment to talk about Twitter before we move on to our other sure. topics. Don told me before the show, and I had noticed, because he's one of my favorite Twitterers, He's not really Twittering. He's not tweeting. You're not on the Twitter so much. Yeah, not so much. I've backed off. Yeah? Yeah. I felt like I was putting in a lot of effort and not getting as much return as was you know, worth the effort. So As you used to or as, as was a, worth it? As Did you I, used to as, get actually, more? As I used to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, if, like 2008 and 2009 was like the undisputed heyday of the Portland tech community, and Twitter mm -hmm. was a big part of that, Yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, but I think as a whole, the, the total volume of tweets amongst the tech community has fallen off somewhat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me personally, I was just over-invested for a while. So I... Was it like took, a shiny new toy that you played with too much? Yeah. <laughs> it was too big of a distraction. Yeah. I wanted to like, you know, experience a work day without reading Twitter <laughs> and remember what that was like. Hmm. <laughs> I know. That's kind of weird, Don. I know. I came back to it. Yeah. So, but a little. A little. Not as much. So yeah. where, where do you think it went downhill? You know, I think it's just a natural ebb and flow. Okay. People are just got used to it. To it wasn't one point. thing that and happened. It was just shiny mm. new toy syndrome. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's fine. Yeah, no, I like it. It's fine. Yeah, I wanted I'm, to. I'm going to go on vacation for a week. I hope you guys don't mind. <laughs> I'll see you when I get back. Basically, I wanted yeah. to, yeah, experience what it was like to be without, you know, tweeting all the time. Mm -hmm. Just to remember. Mm -hmm. Just to remember. Just yeah. to, you know, be in quiet more private time before the Twitter, <laughs> something like that but you but then wanted... buzz came along exactly and that changed everything so what do you think of buzz uh, i think buzz is amazing yeah uh yeah because are you using it i am mm -hmm. about as much as i do twitter first thing that was amazing was in about three days my the social network that i cared about was rebuilt on buzz mm -hmm. and if I buzzed, the audience was about the same, at least to me, as on Twitter. Mm -hmm. To me, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, a thousand people... Well, that tells me that you're very integrated with your Twitter people, though. I mean, well, that tells me that the people that you have contact with on Twitter, you've had contact with in email, etc. True. But what's interesting is, like, the thousand people that follow me on Twitter, you know, once the 50 people that I really interact with followed me on Buzz, mm -hmm. it felt like it was the same thing. Yeah. The effect was the same. So just the fact that it that network built itself up so rapidly was amazing. The other fact is my dad discovered Buzz, you know, and my dad mm -hmm. needs help with his password every couple of weeks because he'll yeah. forget it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just the fact that it's, you know, well integrated into Gmail um, is amazing. See, and I told you I have issues with Buzz. Mm -hmm. And my biggest issue with Buzz is that it's integrated in my Gmail. And that when I said, okay, I'll check Buzz out, it immediately started pulling my contacts and following people for me and telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it also then... I had turned off the suggestions function of my of my reader on Google, my Google reader, yeah. which I religiously use. I, all of the blogs that I actually read, I come, I get through my Google reader because that way I can keep track of them, um, and it's all there with my email. So my email and and my my Google reader are like sacred to me. They are important, and that's how I get things done. That that really is how I get stuff done. And when I'm emailing. I'm emailing. It's like you said you wanted to experience a workday without Twitter. If I'm emailing, I don't want people to bug me. 
Now, it keeps buzz in a separate column, though. All right, you have an inbox button with a number to show the new emails. And it's then all, a it's, buzz section. I know. I had, I had it turned on for the first few days. Okay. And it, it was just all, but it's there, and you can see it, and it's shiny, and it distracts me. <laughs> it is shiny. And it does the whole thing where it starts pulling things out of my inbox. It, I mean, it looks mm-hmm. at everyone that's ever emailed me. It's, yeah. it's like contacting people. And you get it's that little speech bubble for thing me. with the colors in it for e- buzzes. Exactly. And and then you get, if someone mentions you, it sends you a post. I mean, it sends you an email yeah. to tell you. Which and, I really like. Which was too much for me. And mm-hmm. then and then the last straw was when I looked at my Google Reader column and it had decided to reenact or to reinstate suggestions from other people based mm. on my buzz contacts mm, yeah. which i had turned off and now i can't remember how to turn off i can't figure it out <laughs> i spent two hours trying to figure out and it's it shows me that it's turned off and i'm still getting it mm. and and yeah, so I don't use google Reader. so i went and turned buzz off because mm, okay. i was just like no i can't see so I can't. the other thing it's, that's amazing it's personally it's personally uh invasive to me Buzz is a superset of Twitter. (laughs) Like Uh what makes friend feed amazing is that it's more than tweets. It's more Mm -hmm. than microblogging. So anything that I do on Flickr or if a blog post, if I make a blog post, it's just automatically part of Buzz. See, I have stuff that goes to friend feed, but I don't actually use the friend feed. Yeah, I used to, but not anymore. Yeah. That's why I'm glad that Buzz brought it back. What, you know what, and this is, and I, I talked to a couple people with this, what I like about Twitter versus Buzz is that it keeps that social aspect of it separate for me. So if I want to be a part of it, I go and I log into Twitter, I turn on my tweet deck, I check it on my phone. And it's my choice to be involved. Mm. Whereas if I, like, I have the notifications sent to me. If I get email, I know I'm getting email. I'm paying attention. If someone's Mm. emailing me, I usually assume it's important. I just don't click on the buzz section if I don't but it still buzzes. sends you emails to tell you stuff yeah if someone replies to a buzz that i correct buzzed yeah and that's okay with me. correct yeah it's like, it's just too much for mm, me i okay. like to keep my social networky fun time separate okay well and the other thing is buzz is based entirely on open standards mm-hmm. um, and it will kill twitter i'm convinced that's okay that. <laughs> i'll cling i'll cling to dead twitter because like, we can do the thing I'll, we were doing I'll, with I'll identica hold to it's like Little Twitter corpse and tell it I love it. You're going to resuscitate a little bird exactly. there. And... <laughs> I'll get a little eyedropper full of water and, and mash up worms for it. It's okay, Twitter. Okay, it's baby. the whole Identica open source federated servers, right? You'd have your yeah. own little Twitter server, so Twitter could go down and it wouldn't, you know, take out your communication. Yeah. That's possible with Buzz. Yeah. And that, I think, is pretty exciting. Yeah. I'm clinging to the... I'm, Clinging to the dark side of the force on this one. Okay. I am. I'm just like, no, don't take away my Twitter, man. Don't kill it. Don't do it. It's no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. Now that we know how everyone feels about Buzz. Buzz. Yeah. And we've talked about Swip Swap. And we've talked about Jite. I think we might go back into some more Jite, though. But then we're going to talk about Tap Lister. And I want to mm. know are you involved in Tap Lister or do you just really like it? Because I've talked to Carrie about it several times. Mm, cool. Yeah, Carrie they've does got a their iPhone great app. job promoting Taplister. Mm-hmm, he does. So why don't you tell us about Taplister? Um, this is where I, earlier I said, we can talk about beer. <laughs> this is about beer. It's, so, it's the heart of it. That's right, beer. Taplister started out as a way to catalog what's on tap mm-hmm. at various bars by processing tweets. Mm-hmm. And it still does that. Yeah. With the on tap PDX hashtag. Mm-hmm. So if you want to say what's on tap somewhere, you hashtag on on tap PDX and then the bar and the beer. Right. Is that accurate? There, well, there, yeah, you phrase it like an English sentence, mm-hmm. and Carrie has these cool business cards that show how to phrase it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it pulls yeah those tweets out of the tweet stream, makes a little database, and then you can visit the website and look, hey, what, what beers are where. Okay. Like Captured by Porches is my favorite brewery mm-hmm. uh, in St. Helens, mm-hmm. and I can go to the website and find out what bars have that. Very cool. So and that was its original purpose. Yeah, so it, was, it started out being a Twitter aggregator. Mm-hmm. Now there's an iPhone app that you can uh, add and remove beers directly mm-hmm. rather than writing a tweet, okay. and you can browse bars and see what beers they have, mm-hmm. or you can browse a beer and see where it's being sold through the iPhone app. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, so they they came to me, uh, Ken Bear the technical lead there mm-hmm. and said you know we want to do an android port 
So. And if you want to do Android in Portland, who do you talk to? <laughs> talk to Don P. It seems to work out that way. There's plenty of good Android Don developers P, in P. Portland. <laughs> yeah, but and they all come to the monthly Android meetup. It's Don P. Don P. So. When we're done talking about Taplister, I want you to tell us about the monthly Android meetup. But let's talk more about Taplister yeah, first. So, yeah, so they wanted an Android port of their Taplister app. Mm -hmm. So that has begun as well. So tell me when you port, if you're just like porting an iPhone app to another system, what is, how yeah, that's, you know, it's nice because you've already got a reference, mm -hmm. right? If you want to see how it works, you can just look at the iPhone app yeah. and say, okay, we'll do it that way. But the look and feel ends up being pretty radically different Yeah. because the widgets are different. So what, I mean, how different is, how, different. how different is the actual building of it though? I mean, you're taking one thing that's already built. Yeah. Well, they're two different programming languages. Correct. So that there is pretty big. Yes. Um, but, so you can't yeah. just like, oh, I need the translator. Which click? Yeah, right. Click. Oh, okay, good. You can't go to Google Translate and go no. between the two. That <laughs> See, would, that would help. Someone should make that. That would be impressive. That would impress me. I should. I'm sure that's what everyone wants to do. Let's impress Cami <laughs> by translating uh, the programming languages. And you yeah. know, the and Android has background processes, so you have to think, you know, would that help in this case? Correct, because you can run more than one thing at a time. Is that right. what we're talking about? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, can't do that on my so iPhone. There are some, some differences, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, mostly just the look and feel. Yeah. You know, like the look and feel of the Android app is radically different. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and so is it done? And no, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's in progress too. Are you on it, Don? So those are my two Android projects. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you tell us about the Android developers meetings? Uh, so that's a monthly meetup mm -hmm. for power users, developers, anyone interested in Android platform. And yeah, the second Monday of the month, mm -hmm. uh, seven no six p.m. Mm -hmm. at the uh, Lucky Lab on Hawthorne. At the Lucky Lab, and what do you guys mm -hmm. talk about? Uh, just anything. It's really casual. Yeah. So yeah, whatever is on people's minds. So it's like the beer and blog of Android development. It is, yeah. Yeah. The funnest part is uh, showing off what apps you like, mm -hmm. you know, like new apps that you discovered. And yeah. Talking about new phones that are coming out. So how widespread do you think? Because we talked about when Android, when the Android um, movement was first really coming up, we were talking about it and, and how it was going to uh, interact with with you know iphone which was really the only other big one we've got a few right. we've got other stuff that's coming up now that's going to to you know basically the whole like you know personal computer phone right well now there's like a dozen android models yes you know with more coming every, every day and it's going to be an avalanche correct but then we've models. also got the windows 7 yeah windows coming, phone 7 and then migo Migo. Yeah, the, well, yeah, for netbooks. Correct. Uh, I don't think, well, Migo no, for they, phones too. Yeah, they're yeah. having Amigo for phones. Okay. Unless I'm totally, unless I didn't pay attention. Okay, okay I'm right. Well, I think you're right. We, yeah. we, covered, this, we covered this on nice. the PDX. I nice. swear I was paying attention. <laughs> um, so where do you think it fit? Where do you think <clears throat> Android fits in? Uh, well, I think it's a fantastic cell phone platform. Mm -hmm. And I think it should stay there. I've seen netbooks uh, with Android, and yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. You know, like I, I want a window, right? On a mm -hmm. netbook or a tablet. Yeah. And Android and iPhone as well don't, doesn't have the concept of a window. Mm -hmm. It's either like full screen or a little, a little overlay. So let me ask you then what what your opinion of the iPad is. Uh, you know, uh, I love Does the form factor. True? But yeah, the, you know, not, for the same reason why the iPhone's not that interesting, the App Store lock-in, um, mm -hmm. all sorts of Apple lock-in, mm -hmm. the iPad is not as interesting. But there'll be other devices like it mm -hmm. that are be much more open. Well, I mean, there have already been tablets. There have, but not not quite like the iPad. Well, I haven't touched the iPad yet. Mm. Uh, I mean, I have an iPhone, which is basically a little mini version. Pee Wee Herman has an iPad. I believe you. Yeah, it was a great clip of him yeah. showing it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I don't know. I think that it's the most hideous name that it's ever been given it to a product. It is the worst, the worst name. And I think. I tablet is so obvious. I, I know, right? I tablet would have been, I have no idea what, the producer hasn't gotten the whole, like, she's breaking the third wall. Like, yeah, yeah, she's like, yeah, no, actually, it's not breaking the third wall. That would be me talking to you. That's breaking the third wall is when I do this and I have a conversation right with you, people, with you. You know who you are that I'm talking to. She wasn't doing that. She's just laughing. So, you know, one thing that's funny is uh, the Android ads. Like, I love walking down the street and seeing like a giant billboard mm -hmm. that says droid. Mm -hmm. uh, like, what is it? 
something about a bucket of does, right? <laughs> a bucket and, of does? Yeah. Okay. In a world of don't, droid is something about a big bucket of does. And then somebody made the comment, are they saying a bucket of does? <laughs> like, <laughs> deer? Does that have to do with Andy? <laughs> Are we going to start singing from the sound of music now? Does yeah. I'm not going to. Not that too. What? The whole bucket of does. I've oh never my... seen that ad. What's with the does? What do you yeah. have to do with the Android ad? I've never, I've never seen that ad before. So you think that Android should stay with the phone development? Yeah. Not, not a great platform for tablets or okay. uh, netbooks. Okay. Okay. But Miko, maybe. Yeah, I think Miko also is, needs a better name. I We're having naming failure lately. Mm, Migo, I, Windows 7 system phone <laughs> thing with the number, iPad. Uh, iPad, really? I, I need to stop. We need to, next week on the show, we need to not mention. Ixnay on the iPad A. Yeah, because that makes it sound even worse. Okay, so was there something else we were going to talk about? Or did you have a clip for us? I have a clip. Uh, uh, you know, mm. should we explain the clip first, or should we just yeah, could play you, it? Could you could you talk us through it? Can you well, tell us what we're gonna see? We're gonna see uh, a little bit of Amber Case talking about a. Uh, well, see, I can't give away too much, but mm. she's she's talking about having a procedure done, mm -hmm. and uh, and this is just the moments before that happens. All right, let's find so. let's find out what what's gonna go on with Amber here. to go to this building uh, up ahead and um, on the fourth floor I'll go into a small laboratory and they will give me two chips. I'm really excited about it. I mean this is this is an experimental thing. I mean aren't there side effects? What about psychological as well as physical possibilities? And I have a once in a lifetime opportunity to not have to spend you know four hundred thousand dollars on this so I figure why not take the risk? So, given that I haven't seen it, and that we didn't have sound, can you tell me which of this occurred? Because Amber was walking on a beautiful Portland day. That was shot <laughs> uh, at Portland State University, actually. Uh -huh. and, uh, or actually in a park right next to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but So what this is, is called Solid Liquid Air. Mm -hmm. And it is a project that uh, was started by Amber DeSell. Mm -hmm. And she is doing a, a fictional, almost biography in a near future Mm -hmm. a, um, kind of a kind of a cyber oriented possible near term future mm -hmm. and uh, and the story unfolds in about twenty uh, chapters of three to five minutes yeah and yeah so what's interesting about the way that uh, Amber Desell came up with this is she she wrote an outline and invited people to be a director for a chapter yeah so she just made it very open and I think that the final product will have a lot of variety because of that. And one of the directors for one of the segments we had on the show two weeks ago, is that right? That's right. Yeah, Randy Thornton. That's right. Yeah. He is a director for at least one chapter. Very nice. And I've done a chapter. Mm -hmm. and, um, Who else has done a chapter? And Liz Grover. Liz Grover's done a chapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are those are ones that have been shot. Okay. Um, and there are, um, I think, five or six other directors. And um, no. Dr. Are Normal you? wants to do it. No, he wants oh. to oh, okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> he want, yes, Dr. Yeah, would Dr. like Normal. you to put a good word in okay. for him. Yeah, no problem. I'm sure <laughs> that would be great. And um, so, how did how did you how did you get involved? Um, you know, I think it was a beer and blog, mm -hmm. and uh, when I heard that this was going on, I thought, wow, this would be different. Yeah. Yeah, like you know, be the director, and he, so like I had a big camera mount right, and we we're outside, mm -hmm. and there's a boom. Did mic. they provide the equipment for you? Yeah, actually, Liz Grover got a, a Liz hold did. of a lot of it. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, so you know we're we're outside. And people are all looking like, "Ooh, what's going on?" You yeah. know, it's like a television shoot. And <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was a lot, it was a lot of fun to do. Was this what was your segment? So this segment was chapter four mm -hmm. out of twenty, and like I said, I can't say hardly anything about the plot. Secret. Yeah. <laughs> but it's called solid solid liquid solid air. Solid liquid air. And that con <laughs> that concept is uh, basically based on the progression of uh, human machine interactions. Mm -hmm. From sort of archaic being solid, liquid being modern, and air, air. being the future. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you know when the project is? I mean, you're, that was four episodes, and do you know how many are have been shot? 
Um, I'm thinking five or six, but yeah, as far as a due date, yeah, you'd have to ask Amber to sell about that. Okay. That's very cool. You have your hands in a lot of pies. Right now I do. Yeah, it keeps things interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and and we should talk about beer and blog now. Because that's usually, unfortunately, I don't get to see you very often except for when I go to beer and blog. And then I always run into you. Okay. So do you think Portland, do you think beer and blog is still like... <laughs> We're having a really odd night in the studio this week. We've got like people sneezing. The show didn't get recorded the first time. People are giggling. Someone's like <laughs> trying to get a job back, back there. there. Um, it's a little distracting for me and for our guest, I think. Um, and I'm going to ask you about Beer and Blog. Do you think that Beer and Blog is still, uh, you know, we talked about 2009 being the heyday of Twitter and the mm. Portland tech community. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Beer and Blog also very much so. Right now, Beer and Blog is so overcrowded that a lot of times it's hard to communicate when you are there. Yeah, well, when the anniversary weeks, right? That was oh a big deal. Oh, my gosh. And, yeah. then, and then we had the mayor. But it wasn't the one with the mayor. The one with the mayor, I mean, it was a little crowded, but not so bad. But the one before that? I don't know if it was the one right before that or it was just the one before that I attended. I literally could not get, I would see someone I knew and mm -hmm. I would not be able to make it across the room to them because there was no way. Yeah. It, it was like, it was sardine standing room only being packed and pushed and it was really crowded. I know. I Beer blogs are still fantastic. They are fantastic. They still serve a huge purpose. Correct. And that's what I was going to ask. Do you, do you think that they're kind of like the, the, binding point of the portland tech community definitely i mean yeah. you know it was beer and blog that made the uh digital relationships real mm -hmm. you know the, it was the it was the weekly contact that made it a physical you know presence yeah rather than an online buddy that, yeah. could, that could happen anywhere yeah so yeah i mean i'm so glad that they're still going yeah and i love the fact that beer and blog the the notion is so strong mm -hmm. that even when beer and blog is somewhere else People blog still and beer go. still go, yeah. yeah <laughs> to, exactly. To the Green Dragon, like, so it's just, yeah, it's great. It's we been should, a constant. We should mention that next week is like South by Southwest beer and blog. It's for people going to South by Southwest or people who want to know about South by Southwest that are Portland, Portland people. It's the Excellent. Portland touching point for the South by Southwest and for 2010. You're going to South by Southwest. I am going to South by Southwest. It's my first time. I'm very excited. Awesome. I'm very, very excited. I'm giddy. I may, last time I was at Beer and Blog, I actually may have done a happy South by Southwest dance with Media <laughs> Chick because I, she's also going for the first time. I haven't been, but I think of it as the burning man for social media tech types. That's what you told me. I've heard mm. it referred to as the burning man for social media mm -hmm. and also um, spring break for geeks. Yeah. <laughs> for the interactive track. I mean, obviously you have the music and the, and the film. Right. That would be, you know, spring break for film people and spring break for anybody with the music track, really. I mean... That's fantastic. I'm just going for interactive, though. I yeah. can't stay there for like. Where does it happen at? In Austin. Oh, right. At the convention center. I was thinking um, New Orleans. No. That would be fun, too. It's in Austin. That would be fun, too, but it's in Austin, which presents some really interesting challenges for me. Oh, going back home? Basically? <laughs> well, no. My, I didn't live anywhere near Austin. Austin is not like any other part of Texas. Right. But yeah. also, where did you live in Texas? Then? I lived in Baytown, hmm. which is near Houston, which is basically the armpit of the armpit of our country. <laughs> there's some really, really awful parts of Texas, yeah. and then there's Austin, so I'm very yeah. excited. Austin is the Portland of Texas. It is. I've been told. It is the Portland of Texas, <clears throat> very, very much so. Mm -hmm. Yes, every city, every state should have a Portland, but they don't, they're not all that lucky. But it's like the Portland of Texas, but like times 10. Ten times the Portland? Or? No, like, just, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, it's that much exaggerated. They have that much more going on. For goodness sake, they have Austin City Limits in Austin. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I, That's been going on for what? Like I think I'm being mocked. Forever? Years, yeah. For, like, since, maybe since before I was born, I don't know. I have a bad <laughs> concept of time. I really do. But all mm. I know... Dr. Normal says that longer than I have been alive has been Austin City Limits. <laughs> one of my favorite, one of my favorite performances I've ever seen was actually Tom Waits on Austin City Limits, um, which was phenomenal. And then there was Willie Nelson on Austin City Limits, uh -huh. which was also amazing. Anything I'll watch most things if they're on Austin City Limits. 
I don't there was an awesome piano performance on Austin City Limits. I think it was Mandolin Rain. Mm -hmm. uh, that was like one of my favorite YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. We have to. I have to learn to ignore the producers. <laughs> Having two producers is not good. I think we have another clip, Don. Yeah, you know, we. I think we do. Uh, I'm glad you remembered that. I do. I remember that, and this has something to do with feet. It does. Uh, and, and I have to say, I think that you are place. the very first guest to ever take their shoes off and do the show in their socks. Great, because there's nothing better than being as close to barefoot as possible. How about we just run this clip without I think explaining we should run it. the clip and yeah. not explain it. Okay. I think we should. Yeah, run the clip. <laughs> that was a totally spontaneous Vibram's Five Finger ad. Um, so tell me about the Vibram's Five Finger, because they're not for your hands, so obviously they I shouldn't know. really Why be called call fingers. fingers. Why don't they call them Five Toes? Know. You're right. Really? Oh, yeah, they should. It doesn't make any sense. Naming fail. Again, mm -hmm. naming, naming fail. Naming is hard. Naming is hard. It's I should really know. Hard. One of the hardest things to do. It is. Naming is difficult. Mm. It's, I understand why people have a hard time naming things. I do. There's something I've been trying to name for months now, and... Eventually, it'll, get, it'll happen, but I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to name it Five Fingers and have it actually be Toes or call it <laughs> or, an eye. Yeah, or something that means something insulting in another, another language. Exactly. You know? Like the Nova. So, so what? <laughs> um, Why don't you tell us about the Five from Five Fingers? They're shoes. Yeah, they're uh, probably Aqua Socks is the best description. But I see people it. wander around in them like shoes. Yeah. Like around the city. Yeah. And I, I get that Portland's wet. Ne Neophiliac is yes, Neophiliac. Like my hero. I when always it comes see him. To five and five I fingers. always the first time I ever saw them were mm. he was wearing them at a beer and blog. Yeah, Actually, he, I think it was beer and blog at about us last year that I saw him with them on. Okay. And then he was there again this last week, wasn't he? Yeah, he's got an all black pair that he calls his formal five his fingers. His formal five yeah. fingers. <laughs> is this like the formal crocs? Everyone always says that oh. their black crocs are their formal crocs God. and then I want to smack That's them. That's an abomination. Yeah. yeah. Hi Aaron Hockley. He's <laughs> sleeping because he's got a cold. Um so do you have do you have them? I do, yeah, and they're great. Although I don't like I don't wear them as much as Neophiliac. Mm -hmm. It gets cold. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the ground gets cold and like, yeah. I wear them in the spring and summer. But, I mean, are they practical for, like, if you're walking on the sidewalk and there's broken glass? Oh, my glass? God. They feels so good. But what if there's broken glass on the sidewalk? Look, well, see the broken just glass. We that, live in a city. You know? <laughs> it's all the other things that you feel, you know, like at downtown when you come onto a sidewalk, there's a little square of bumps, you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Like that yellow square. Yeah. So, yeah. so that feels weird, you know? Yeah. You just feel everything, right? Yeah. And that's the best part of it. Yeah. But, but what if you step in something ucky or sharp mm, i don't know you just watch where you're going <laughs> you have to pay attention i see that's yeah, not my strong down. suit <laughs> i i have a hard enough time paying attention to whether or not cars are going to hit me that's not true i pay very close attention i'm a very careful pedestrian so, so much so that i don't look at the sidewalk to see if i'm stepping on broken glass or not well if you can walk in heels i can down a uh, downtown sidewalk i can for quite you, you some distance, actually. Do the five five fingers I don't want to. <laughs> I don't think they're as flattering on me as maybe a pair of high heels, in my own personal yeah, but, opinion. You know, where where do you place the importance on, on looks or on feel? It depends on what I'm doing. <laughs> uh -huh. When I'm walking down the street, I, I prefer I would prefer that my feet look nice mm. and be somewhat comfortable. I, I don't need to to have foot condoms on. <laughs> <laughs> But they're comfortable. You, yeah, you ride I heard your bike them called in them. Gorilla shoes. Gorilla shoes. Gorilla toes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it is hard to bike in them. It's hard to bike I do in them. If I have to. And you bike a lot. Yeah, I bike everywhere. I know. Uh, so do you like change into them when you get somewhere? No. No. I'm just biking them, and it's funny because my pedals are SPDs, so I just got the click in things, and mm -hmm. it, it barely works. But yeah, it's, yeah, it works. So you don't have like the standard pedal; you just have the click. Right. Hmm. So um, so that that shot was uh, Eagle Creek trail mm -hmm. just past the gorge mm -hmm. and uh, me and a guy who works next to me at ned space went out hiking mm -hmm. in the five fingers yeah it was great uh, and there's this thing called lower punch bowl it's a beautiful trail mm -hmm. 
and then I just yeah got this inspiration to shoot this five fingers ad. Nice. And the, you know the Vibram has a contest to shoot an ad. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you get, but you get something. I need to submit so did that. You, yeah, you should submit yeah, that definitely. That, but... So is there like a little five finger community? I'm sure. Well, so there, there's a five finger tribe. I think Neophiliac made all this up. Mm -hmm. And when you meet someone wearing the, those shoes, you've got to lift your leg up and like do this foot to foot thing. And then that's like the you know secret that's handshake. Awesome. That's kind of personal. <laughs> <laughs> there's a secret handshake for vibrant. That five just fingers. seems kind of personal to me. Except... To be touching your feet together. I don't know. <laughs> I reserve that That's for people I really like. That's what creates the bond, like. you know? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not going to be buying that shit. That's maybe just not my thing. Do you know a lot of women that wear them? Hmm. Okay, Crunchy Sue. Mm hmm She mm -hmm. wears them. I, I did know that. I've yeah. seen Sue's. All right. Actually, she's the only one I've seen. <laughs> okay. I think there have been others, but the only Twitter person I've seen. If you're a woman and you wear the Vibram Five Fingers, which, again, when I say Vibram Five Fingers to a woman, don't you hear something different? <laughs> just... <laughs> Naming, yeah. Naming is very... <laughs> Oh, naming is very difficult. <laughs> it's been a long week, people. <laughs> it's been a very long week. And naming is very difficult, and it's suddenly very warm. In my <laughs> What does what the chat room oh, have to say? Oh, I don't think we want to know after what I just said. Oh, oh they have a good stuff. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, I entertain myself greatly. I really, really do. Okay. <laughs> oh, Don, talk. Talk, Don. Say something smart. Okay, you're never going to wear those shoes. <laughs> I'm never going to wear. And... No. I'm wearing these shoes. These are comfortable as far as high heels go. I wore these during 30 hour day for like a very good portion of 30 hour day and my feet were fine and i did step on something outside sounds, and my foot didn't hurt that sounds masochistic <laughs> well there's that yeah that, that it's not a, that's not a characteristic i would not apply to me mm -hmm. um they're fine though my feet didn't hurt i like them they look pretty yeah nate angel's wife demanded photos of these shoes which was a creepy moment for me did you <laughs> tweet about them no i wore them at 30 hour day and and uh, uh <laughs> twigs saw them and then asked for a picture she asked on i and i wasn't monitoring twitter during 30 hour day so she asked someone for a picture of them so later i was looking at the 30 hour day Flickr stream and there was a picture of my shoes aaron hockley had gone into the dressing room and found my shoes <laughs> and taken a picture of them when i wasn't wearing them and i was like mm. Aaron, would you like to explain <laughs> how there's a picture of my shoes? Which hmm. then he explained and yeah. it made sense, but I was a little creeped out. Yeah, I was like, it could be what? creepy without an explanation. What are you doing? I'm not high-fiving my <laughs> foot to you. What are you doing? Stop being a shoe stalker, man. Vibram Five Finger. Poorly named. High-five the shoe. <laughs> if really? Two, Have you ever had to high-five somebody with the shoe? Heels, yeah, tried to do the Vibram secret handshake. Somebody would be injured. Yeah, no, that's why we drink instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's our bonding. <laughs> we drink and, and yeah, no, I don't know. I don't. And fall down because you're wearing high heels? No, I've only fallen down in one pair of high heels. And it was because it was slippery and they were really tall. That's like clip in bike shoes. But you, you know you what? You fall down at least once. Those shoes that I was wearing when I fell, they looked really good. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They were really great shoes. And I was at a cocktail party. Oh. So, well, you know, you, you can't wear vibrant five fingers to a cocktail party unless they're black and they're your formal hair. You know, you, you also can't wear vibrants <laughs> without being a salesperson. You know, like you walk down the street and every single day I wear them. Somebody says, hey, what are those? That, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I've been told I need to carry a backpack of extra pairs and so I just sell, sell them, them on the street. On the yeah. street corner. Yeah. It's a little creepy, Don. <laughs> uh, it, it might work. It might. Actually, the sizing is like super accurate. Because you, know? you, yeah. Yeah, because they fit so. Are they like quarter sizes? Custom. How do they? It's the European sizes, uh, so yeah, forty-three centimeters. Yeah, yeah, that confuses me. Mm. Yeah, I think you can, you know, draw your foot on a piece of paper and then mail it, and they'll just send you back the right size. <laughs> this company freaks me out. <laughs> <little bit. laughs> but isn't that great? You know, shouldn't every shoe company do that? Like, you get a perfect outline of your foot. That. It's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
is accurate. I hope they shred the foot drawing afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. What if the drawing were, had like foot odor on it? I know. know? <laughs> right? And yeah. then you send it so it's all like tucked up in an envelope or something. If, yeah. if they were smart, they would only accept scans. Because <laughs> that would be a lot safer, right? You're right. Only faxed. Beats. Only fax and scan because, yeah. Really, I'm having a hard time with the high five foot thing. I mean, I'm flexible enough. I could. But why would you want to high five someone else's foot? <laughs> because it's so unique. It's something you can only do in five fingers and have it really work. Or toe socks, which I also don't wear. Yeah. My toes don't I like don't to either. be separated from one another. And you can't wear toe socks down the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Producer no. <laughs> Morgan and producer Mike are We're having foot, foot high fives. High fives. <laughs> as soon as this episode is over, I'm going to bed and pretending this was all a bad dream. <laughs> I just can't. And they were doing it. They even like, got the alignment and everything. Well, uh, yeah, it's because neither of them wear high heels. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no bleeding afterwards. No. This was a disaster. This was just... You are fine. <laughs> you were fine, Don. We we have about 12 minutes left. All right. What else do we have to talk about? You're going to Burning Man again this year. I am. Yeah, I got the ticket already. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited. What are the dates? I'm excited. Uh, you know, that's a good question. End of August. End of August. Mm-hmm. And beyond that, I don't know. I just know that um, the ice vendor person the ice vendor person yeah yeah the person who vends ice sharon sharon greenfeld sharon g, sharon g. Uh -huh. yeah she's going uh and i think i'm getting a ride with her very cool yeah very very cool are it's you like excited that, that hitler that you know the hitler, hitler, the hitler clip that everyone video? uses yeah mm -hmm. the first time i saw that it was about burning man so yeah was, i think that was the original yeah that clip has become way overused yeah i think it's dead yeah I think there's it is. an iPad one. There's like an everything. There was. Thing. There was a there was a Shazam one. The Shazam one was hilarious. I know it was, yeah, right? It was, yeah, it was, it was really, really good. funny. I did enjoy the Shazam <laughs> one. There was another one that I enjoyed too, but mostly I think it's overused. And Dude. mostly I'm freaked out by the fact that if someone like ran into the actor that played Hitler, they would be like, Oh my god, Hitler, I love you. <laughs> did did we find out who created the Shazam clip? I I have no idea. Does anyone know? Still, I think it's still a secret. Anyway. There's too many cameras in here. I'm not sure where I'm looking. <laughs> was I looking at the right camera? Can't tell. Whoever did it did a good job. Yeah, they did. They did a really good job. Mm -hmm. It was very funny. A lot of yeah, a lot of really you know like local references. Mm -hmm. So it had to be an insider. Yes, it definitely had to be an insider because they got they got some stuff lined up very very nicely. So, what do you have a special project planned for Burning Man? Just to attend. Just to attend. You're not doing anything. Uh, and well, I think I'm gonna be part of a theme camp. I think. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what the theme is for uh, your theme camp yet? No, but there's still a lot of time. There is a lot of time. You know what? There isn't a lot of time left for is uh, the Shamrock Run. In four, what, three weeks. It's very soon. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's very 8K soon. and 15K race. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes down by the waterfront. Yeah, yeah, and up along to Are you going to do Boulevard. that? Yeah. So Is that I, why you ran six miles today? That's right. Because the 15K nine-mile race uh, I'm doing in three Sundays. Wow. So, yeah, I still got ways to go. It's really <clears throat> soon. So it's not, it's, it's, not on the, it's not actually on St. Patrick's Day. It's the Sunday before mm. or it's the Sunday the after? April 15th. I don't know. Is not April St. Patrick's no, Day? No, not April. Mar March. Or March 15th, rather. Yeah. No, the 17th is St. Patrick's okay. Day. So the 15th. <clears throat> Would actually not be a Sunday because St. Patrick's Day is a Wednesday, so it would be the 14th. Hmm. No, you're right. 14th, yeah. yeah. Good thing. Glad you're here to fix these things. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here to tell you. That will be while I'm at well, South by Southwest. Oh, great. Okay. Yes, which puts that in perspective. It's very yeah. soon. You'll be doing your own running. I'll be doing hmm. From. I won't be running. I won't be running at all, but Dr. Normal's about to run right upstairs. Right now. Thank you, Dr. Normal. It's a whirlwind of activity in the house of strange wow. love this evening it really really is and i hope that producer morgan is going to be ready to wrap the show up because she's going to be the one closing out the show tonight in in a, just a few mere moments it's going to be right. fantastic so when did you start running because i've as long as i've known you you've always rode, ridden your bike rode your bike you've been yeah, big a big bike enthusiast sixth or seventh shamrock run yeah so and wow. do you stop and let the cacos give you the beer and donuts 
No, <laughs> but it's funny to run by them. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like I, I start in January and train for the Shamrock and then forget uh -huh. about running for the rest of the year. So that's the only run you do? Yeah. Why this run? You know something to do in the winter. Like the winter, you gotta, you gotta get through the winters, you know? Yeah. So like if you're running every few days, that helps. Yeah. So the, that's the whole reason that you do the Shamrock run is just yeah. something to do during the winter. Yeah. Well, what? running is good for you. It's good for you. <laughs> With your five finger shoes um, and your, you should you want to try running in some? I I mean they won't fit you. I could I could get you some high heels if you <laughs> want to try them. Hmm, it's no. really it's not it it actually improves your balance greatly. I could see that it does. I'd rather if, have like a balance beam in my yard. I used to do yeah. Just I used to do. I had a balance beam. Like some ninja skills. Yeah, yeah. No, Maybe your good. balance is greatly improved. Yeah. Uh, also. Also uh, builds muscles in your legs. Poise. Poise. Mm. Correct. Can you walk in high heels with a book on your head? Yes. <laughs> I can also walk in high heels while carrying very full martini glasses. Impressive. Sometimes I can do that with a laptop tucked under my arm. Impressive. While I hold my, my phone against my shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Um, I try not to do that because I'm afraid I'm going to drop my, my laptop. Uh, or spill the martinis, but yeah, no, I mean, you, you know, I don't know. I know. What do guys do for balance? Hmm. Hmm. Not a lot. No, 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 I don't I think, think they women do Women have the advantage in that area. Well, unless they can't. All thanks to high heels. Yeah. Or, well, let's see. I, 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 I did gymnastics when I was younger, and yeah. I think that the gymnastics is the reason I'm able to walk in high heels. It's because I developed a better sense of balance. And then was able to walk in high heels. Also, I used to steal my mother's high heels when I was a kid and wander around the house. And my mother wore ridiculously high heels when, when I was a kid. I'm not sure why. I think it was, you know, it's the 80s. That could segue into parkour. Where you jump and twist and spin over things in an urban city environment. Uh-huh. Have you seen those videos? I've seen those videos. Yeah, it's not something yeah. I'm interested in doing. Uh, I look at that and think, wow. I'm, I look at that and think, <laughs> and think, ow. Yeah, some of them. I would hurt myself. Mm -hmm. That's not something I'm interested in doing. Are you going to try that? I think capoeira maybe first. Yeah. The Brazilian fighting, dancing thing. Yeah. yeah. Producer this, Morgan's very excited about that prospect. You're yeah. going to that summer. Me, me and Morgan are going to spar. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. She's going to take you down. Unless I'll teach you. There's one move. It's it's the hug Morgan. <laughs> that even though she practices martial arts and and I'm a dainty little wisp of a cami can not um if you hug her properly you can floor her yeah easily i've done it more than once I'm, i don't know like the first time it was an accident and the second time i was like i can take her down wow you come up with a weaponized hug <laughs> i know right that's really good yeah. i know it's <laughs> impressive isn't it i don't know if it would work on you because you're kind of tall so you, so you have two offensive maneuvers. You've got the heel stab. Mm -hmm. like, and and then, the defensive hug. Yeah. Yeah, offensive hug. There's That's... no defense to the hug. It's like the, it's it's like the crane pose in <laughs> Karate Kid. This yeah, there's no way to fight that. There's no ultimate. way to fight that. Okay. It's take you down every time. Sorry. Well, I'll have to be aware of that in the next beer and blog. I'd have to have really high heels on to do that to you, though, because my center of gravity is not high enough to take you down, mm. unfortunately. Mm. You're really tall. So you have to have a modified offensive hug technique. Like if I was standing on a chair and I hugged you, mm. then... <laughs> <laughs> so if you're tall you and you see well? me standing... Yeah, but that's fine. I've got, mm. a, lot of, I've got a lot of balance. <laughs> the I might balance fall down, but in. then I you know, just land on my toes like yeah. a cat. yeah. I'd do that backflip where I stand up again. Can you do that? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I, I wish I could. That'd be cool. Yeah. So you know that it won't work. Then I still win. But if I say I'm going to, then maybe, you know, my attacker would buy it. But if it's, I'm your attacker and yeah. I already know that you can, Damn. you I'm shouldn't have honest. answered my question. I know. I'm too honest. You shouldn't. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. Maybe I was really Just trying don't to come near you. me. Just don't come near me when I'm standing on a chair. Okay. Or a tall step stool. Because you are significantly taller than I am. <laughs> um, significantly taller than I am. I'm short. You are not short. You're very tall, Dawn. I know. I'm like taller than almost everyone. Yeah. Except media chicks, kid. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's very tall. He's tall. 
I'd have to stand on a building. Mm. It's it's great at Beer and Blog when he comes, and I'll stand next to him. And Robert yeah. Neal, I don't know if you know him, but we're all like over six. Well, I'm six three. They're both taller than I am. Uh huh. And yeah, very unusual. After yeah, wake up. he's really tall. It's a, like you can always immediately tell if he's there. If Media Chick has brought her son, you're always like, oh, <laughs> right. look at the tall kid. Where's Michelle? Oh, that right there, mm. right there. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's very, very nice. I think with that, yeah, this was an interesting evening. <clears throat> it's very interesting. Mm, yes, this is an interesting, and we never even got to discuss your mustache. I think we should oh, talk yeah. about your mustache. I was going for the Ryan Snyder look. The Ryan Snyder, because mm -hmm. when I saw you on Wednesday, which was your birthday, I it might was, mention. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you had, it came down a little further. Yeah. It was more it like was a Wyatt Earp. the Jed uh, stash. <laughs> Oh, that was the Maestro Jed stash. Yeah, yeah Maestro Jed, Justin Kistner, whiter. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of facial hair the you had going on. The mandelbars. The mandelbars. The mandelbars. What's inspired the whole mustache thing? Uh, it's a creative way to get rid of the beard. Nice. So I'm just progressively nice. taking it all away. I wonder if Nate Tronics is. I know he was talking about rocking yeah, he's mustache do that for a while. Too. Yeah, he's February got is over. Quite the beard going. Yeah, yeah he does. The, he's got a mountain man. Really like beardy. Black beard. Yeah. Yeah, he looks like a like a grown up. <laughs> Let's not go too far. He does. All right. I think with that, we're going to say goodnight to all you boys and girls. I think the microphones are still on. I'm not sure. Producer Maureen is sneaky, but I hope you guys have a great week. And don't do the five finger toe thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>